at this time with the economy, a lot of people sit back and they're looking at what's the job market. And I don't think you're going to find any other profession where the outlook is as good for, as, as it is in PA. But that's probably not the most important reason you should consider being a physician assistant. It's usually somebody who's had a long interest in healthcare. They want to practice medicine, but they want to balance between lifestyle, family, and their career. Our core faculty here, who are um, our advisors and the coordinators, are awesome. They're here with you from day one when you get in as a freshman. Um, they make sure that you're doing okay through undergrad, and then once you get into the graduate phase, um, it's cool because they're your teachers, but you respect them as PAs out in the community. Um, their knowledge is amazing, and I guess it really inspires me to one day be just like them and have that knowledge. How many volunteer hours do I have to have to apply to the Damon College PA program? We're a little bit different than many schools. Pretty much every school is going to expect that you either have direct patient care experience or volunteer experience. For Damon's program, we don't require that actually until you enter the third year of the program when you have to have 120 hours. We do encourage students to have that when they apply coming out of high school, um, but it's not required at that point because it actually is kind of hard, I understand, with sports and music and all the other activities and working to get that experience and you're not qualified to do anything yet. But we do encourage you to at least interview a physician assistant, interview your pediatrician, your family doctor, talk to family friends who are nurses, make sure this is the right profession for you because um, there's obviously good and bad about every job, and I want you to come into it with your eyes wide open and recognize why you chose this profession. But you don't have to have your hours until you're actually in your third year. Every single PA student in the country has to do clinicals, and the average is 2,000 hours. We say that we follow the medical model. So every single student will have exposures in women's health, pediatrics, surgery, OB, uh, actually emergency medicine, psychiatry, family practice, internal medicine, and each of those at Damon is four weeks. And then they also are able to do electives. And what we've learned over the years is we want our students to be able to kind of pick their electives to guide them to the specialty that they want to be in. So it's not mandated. We meet one-on-one -on -one with every single student for the first six months of their clinical year. And we do it at Damon or at the clinical site and it's for two and a half to three hours and it's one-on-one -on -one teaching to find out their strengths, their weaknesses, how well we prepare them so they can help us make our program better. But we also are working with them to make sure they pass their boards, they find out what specialties they like. Um, and it's a very unique thing that we do that very few other programs do. And if they see that you're a hard-working student, they will do anything they can to get you to that goal. So I think that that has been my favorite um, part about Damon is I've learned a lot from them and they have taught me a lot. So a few years ago there was a movement in the country to kind of get away from traditional cadaver anatomy and you may find programs in the country that don't have cadavers. Well at Damon we usually have 10 to 12 cadavers that are donated through the through the University of Buffalo anatomical gift program and it's a great um, opportunity for our students. A really good experience that I've had so far in the Damon PA program I think has been the first year and spending a lot of time in the um, cadaver lab that we have. We actually have iPads at every station for, with every one of the uh, donated cadavers and our students can go in there from 6 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night with their own eye, um, key fob to unlock the door um, seven days a week and they can study with the cadavers and they can use their iPads so instead of only seeing a demonstration once now they can pull up any of those demonstrations anytime they want to and they can zoom right in on whatever anatomical structure is being demonstrated to them by Dr. Steen and they can watch it over and over and over again. It's an amazing learning experience um, to actually see the real body and to, like, to go through it and just to find things and it's really um, an amazing understanding now of what I have and I think it was a lot of hard work um, and time put into it, but it was all really valuable, and I'm glad that I had that opportunity here at this school, because I know that not every school um, has that available to them. So what is Students Without Borders? 15 years ago, we had a student come to us and said, I'd like to bring a medical mission trip to the Dominican Republic. And since that day, we've actually taken almost 500 students to the Dominican Republic. So every year in January, 30 to 40 students go on a medical mission trip to a small town outside of uh, San Pedro de Marqueris. We send along several PAs, a physician, sometimes a dentist, and we care for about 450 to 500 patients in a week in this clinic. 
Um, students spend the entire year fundraising, and you can't go on the trip unless you've actually earned hours here in Buffalo volunteering. After you graduate, what do you have to do to become a certified PA? Well, every PA in the country takes an exam called the PANTS, the Physician Assistant National Certifi Certification Exam. And it's an it's a online exam that's offered throughout the year. And um, again, every, st every student graduating from any accredited program will take that. And that allows you to become certified and work in any of the 50 states and territories in the United States. So for Damon, um, since we've started our program, over 99.5% of our students have actually passed that exam and gone on to practice. But more importantly, we want to see how do our students do the first time they take the test. So over the last five years, we average at 98%. So what does that really mean? That means that usually it's 100%, but every year or two, there may be one student who didn't pass it the first time, and we work with that student individually to make sure they pass it the second time. And then they go on to practice and have really uh, remarkable careers. And over the course of the program, I can tell you, the numbers that have not passed that test on the first, first try is very, very, very small. I have heard in the community that a lot of the preceptors in the area, doctors, PAs, um, they know when they have a Damon PA coming to do their rotation because, oh, they're so smart, they want to learn, they got it. So that's pretty cool, too, to have such a, you know, that, oh, they know us, that we're going to do well, and we're going to be great. So. And I just actually was sitting down with the administrator the other day, and he said, everywhere he goes, he gets asked about our PA program. So we're really proud of that, and it's something we've worked really hard to get that reputation. It all starts from the, gra the applicants we bring in to the quality of the classes they take, to the great clinical teaching that they received in our, in our hospitals and from our preceptors. Um, and then we're really a pretty tight-knit community when they get out. So being a Damon PA is something, we call us a few of the proud of the Damon PAs.